The Exorcism. Uh, last year, we had uh, Russell Crowe in the entertainingly stupid The Pope's Exorcist, in which he played Vatican exorcist father Gabriele Mort fighting the devil on a Vespa, and they really missed a trick not calling that film Christ on a Bike, because... <laughs> and at least Very that good. film was kind of... It was, you know, it was funny. And I was involved in a documentary about uh, a, a Mort, which Friedkin made, and believe me, he was nothing like Russell Crowe, but that film was stupid fun. So now... There's another Russell Crowe exorcist movie. Um, peculiar sort of mashup of cinematic self-referential schlock. It's produced by Kevin Williamson. And meandering, po-faced, angsty tedium. This is co-directed and written by Joshua John Miller, who is the son of Jason Miller, who played Father Damien Carris uh, in The Exorcist. And he's made this with only 14 and so obviously there's a kind of, oh, well, there's a connection to the, you know, to The Exorcist. Uh, the film's been described by the studio as a film that reverently nods to a classic horror while adding a fresh twist. Oh, a fresh twist. Okay, fine. So Russell Crowe really stretches himself. He plays a washed up, paunchy actor, Anthony Miller, get it? Miller, get it? Mm -hmm. Who gets the chance to play The Exorcist in a horror film remake, which is called The Georgetown Project, get it? about a possessed girl, get it, and a, and a priest who has to perform the exorcism. And he gets the job after the previous person who had the job has a brush with devilish forces. So he gets it because of tragedy. And he goes for the audition. Adam Goldberg has fun as the director. And he fumbles his lines and he can't do anything. But the director wants him because he was an altar boy as a kid and maybe something terrible happened. And then he famously became a washed up drunk whose wife died and then he, he crawled into a bottle and all this stuff happened. Now he's reunited with his daughter, Ryan Sigmund, who's been expelled from school, refuses to call him dad, but agrees to be his PA on the movie because I think the script needs them to be together in the same scene and otherwise it's not going to work. Um, David Hyde Pierce is the real life priest who's brought in to oversee the filming because, you know, in The Exorcist, they, they, you know, they, 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 they really had a priest on set and Sam Worthington, I'm not quite sure what he does because he's sort of, he's, he's barely in it, but he just turns up and then goes away. Anyway, the role of being the priest gets under crow's skin. The next thing he's gone all demonic and all ranty and ravey and threatening and bedraggled, you know? So, like I said, big stretch for Russell. Here's a clip. Where are you going to go? You don't have a school. You don't have a mother. All you have is me. Sleep it off, asshole. Is that any way to talk to you, Dad? <laughs> Get out. Get out. Get the f out. Get out. Tony, get out. <laughs> My name's not Tony. The question is, why on earth would Russell Crowe do this straight after doing The Pope's Exorcist? The answer is he didn't. The principal photography on this film happened in 2019, five wow. years ago, okay? The production then was shut down because of COVID and didn't get completed. Everyone forgot about it. I think probably Russell Crowe thought maybe it had gone away. It only got completed in 2023, by which time he'd done The Pope's Exorcist. And the reason it got completed was because The Pope's Exorcist did $77, $80 million on a, you know, on a budget of thrompens. And so probably somebody thought, and they, they were going to finish it and then put it out on streaming services, but there's nothing out in cinemas at the moment that's really doing any business. So somebody went, oh, Russell Crowe, Exorcist movie. Yeah, we're ex fine. Let's finish that off, take it out of streaming, stick it into cinemas. And that is pretty much why it is that we now have the exorcism in cinemas. There is no other reason for it to be there because, firstly, a plot makes no sense at all. It includes people falling out of windows and then immediately being fine, uh, re like certain death, but then, then they're, they're not dead. I mean, I kept expecting one of the characters, and I don't know which one, any of them, to wake up and go, oh, it was all a dream, because that way it would have explained why none of it made any sense at all. Uh, the, the main demonic power on display is the ability to turn the lights on and off, which, let's be honest, is not that... Oh, also, to make loud banging noises. There is the film within the film that isn't The Exorcist, but is The Exorcist, but isn't The Exorcist for legal reasons, is the least convincing depiction of a film on film since Woody Allen's dismal 
Rainy Day in New York. You remember the film for which Timothy Chalamet apologised for working with Woody Allen but didn't apologise for being crap in the film? The whole thing about Russell Crowe's character is like, you know, he can't remember his lines, he can't do his scenes, he can't do anything, but the director wants him because, oh, wow, there's all this, you know, there's this stuff going on in his life and you think, oh, well, I don't know, maybe that maybe that connects to all the ooga booga around what happened with The Exorcist. But it, the, the, the point at which they finally shut the film down is a point after which he, as an actor, has gone so crazy that he literally smashes his face repeatedly on a table and instantly that isn't a plot spoiler because it's actually in the trailer. Then when you get to the, the the exorcism sequence, what they've done is they've ripped off the exorcism from Exorcist 3, which, if you know anything about this, is the thing that shouldn't be in Exorcist 3. So it's like it's a ripoff of a reshoot. And it's, okay, Pope's Exorcist was like high cap hooey. This is full of kind of arts. Oh, no, it's about character. It's about the legacy of mm, you know, this stuff that he's dealing with. And Russell, we, we, we'd like you to look like you're really wrestling with your inner demons because it's not really about demons. You know, it's, a, it's about... And then suddenly you go, oh, actually, it is about demons. Remember the, bit in the, the, the new Exorcist Believer in which Ellen Burstyn gets her eyes stabbed out with a crucifix? Well, this goes, yeah, fine, because crucifixes are stabby things. So this adds stabby crucifix and then catching fire and all this stuff is going on and i'm just watching this thinking i can't believe how bad this is and then i watched an interview with the filmmakers who said yeah it's really to do with coming to terms with the you know the legacy of the the film and and you know and and the way in which we were all we were all dealing with our personal do you know it isn't no it isn't it's a way of cashing in i there's a film called the exorcist did really well here's a film called the exorcism it's one letter different it's one letter different but so therefore if it takes like one quinty millionth of a bit of what the first we'll get away with it and like i said five years old was going to go straight to streaming wasn't even going to be finished russell crowe presumably hoped that it would never see the light of day because lordy lordy miss claudie he's rubbish in it and he's it's not even a stretch role it's like russell washed up angry annoyed actor go oh and incidentally do it as a priest it's absolute I mean, it's it's just it, it's you, they should put they should put it on a, they should put it on a triple bill with this Exorcist the beginning and Exorcist Believer as the triple bill of films about which the people that made them have said, yeah, well, they reference a, a classic, but then they put a fresh twist on it. The fresh twist being that this time it stinks the it stinks to high heaven. I waited all the way through to the end of the credit incidentally to see whether there was a, a gag reel, you know, but there wasn't. <laughs> 